and in the last couple of years it's awakened or has brought stuff into the cemetery that where people hardly want to come out here anymore because even in the daytime you see what we consider today I think that this part of Arizona's history has been forgotten. That's why I'm doing this particular episode here in Litchfield Park. Why am I in Litchfield Park? Litchfield Park, I'm gonna wait for the car to go by, is a total of 3.3 square miles. That's it, it was incorporated in 1987, but what's inside of this 3.3 square miles is absolutely beautiful. To my right is the Wigwam Resort. To my left is the very first church that Paul W. Litchfield built in the early 1930s. This adobe church that I will show you soon. There is a church that's down the road a little bit that was built in 1919. This, there is unbelievable history here. So let's go check it out. So around 1917, the Goodyear Tire Company wanted to come here to Arizona because it was the right climate to grow this new kind of long stem cotton that they needed to grow to weave into their tires, to make their tires a lot stronger. So they decided to come to Arizona. Why come to Arizona to do this? Well, this was during World War I, and most of the cotton that they got was coming out of Egypt. Why couldn't they still get it from Egypt? Well, German U-boats were then blocking the sea during World War I and was blocking the cotton from coming to America. Another spot where America was getting this cotton was the South. But during that time, there was a pestilence going around in the South and it was killing the cotton crop. So the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company had to find another place, had to find somewhere where they could grow this new long staple cotton. So they came right out here to Litchfield Park. So the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company sent Paul W. Litchfield out to Arizona in around 1917 to, to, to talk to farmers to see if they would grow this new type of cotton. Well, Paul W. Litchfield talked to many, many, many farmers and every single one of them said, no way, we're not stopping growing our crop out here to grow this cotton that you wanted to grow. So Paul went back to Ohio, back to the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, spoke to the higher ups and said, you know what, we might as well just go out there and lease and buy our own land. And that's exactly what the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company did. They took Paul's advice, they came out here, they leased land in here, right here in Litchfield Park, they leased land out in Sun City, and they leased land in Chandler, Arizona. And if you haven't seen that video on Chandler, Arizona, in the Acatillo Goodyear Cemetery, I'm gonna put it right up here. Check it out right after this video. So here on the corner of Wigwam Boulevard at Litchfield Park here in Arizona, there stands a church that's right here. I'm gonna turn it around. It's an old adobe church. It's the oldest church in Litchfield. And it's dated, the cornerstone says 1919. Check this out, still standing, beautiful looking church. This area is, looks like it's very well kept. Okay, so I'm back in the Jeep. Uh, let me turn this air conditioner down a little bit. It is beautiful though. It's only 89 degrees out at 11 o'clock. It's absolutely, this is the time of year to live in the great state of Arizona. This is when all the snowbirds come down. But um, 
I'm going to head over to another church, which was a non-denominational church at the time. It's a little bit different now, but it was built in the early 1930s by Paul W. Litchfield. Um, he wanted to build it. They didn't have a church. They didn't have a, a place to come together and worship. So he's like, let's build this non-denominational church so, so that people can have services. There's an interesting story behind it. So let's go out there and head, uh, let's go out there and check it out. And then we're going to head to the Wigwam Resort. That's another interesting place out here, the Wigwam Resort. Okay, so what you're looking at is the non-denominal church that Paul W. Litchfield built in the early 1930s. It's an adobe church. They dug everything they needed from the ground here and built this church up. And we're going to get a little bit closer because the paint, the outer paint that's been redone on this church, you can actually see some of the original adobe structure to this church. I just spoke to somebody on the inside. They are actually redoing the outside of the church. They're actually repainting it. So some of the original, uh, the light fixtures that they have have been taken down. Some of the other things that are on the outside structure of this building have been taken down so they can go ahead and paint it. Okay, I've arrived at my first spot. It's the Goodyear Cemetery. Now this cemetery is like the Goodyear Acatillo Cemetery that I went to. In, uh, in Chandler. Uh, the, uh, the people who are buried here are supposed to be the people that had worked the, uh, the cotton farms. So uh, let's go check it out and see what it looks like. There's a gentleman out here with somebody else. Uh, they're digging around. I don't know what they're digging for, but they're digging. Let's see what's, uh, let's see what's up. My name is Dr. Jose Villela. I am an archaeologist, historian, and I mostly deal with uh, historic cemeteries. Other archaeologists deal with the prehistoric, the Hohokami and other prehistoric tribes, but I deal with mostly cemeteries around the state of Arizona. This cemetery, being the Goodyear Farm Cemetery, was established by Mr. Paul W. Litchfield back in 1908. Even though the date on some of the signs says 1917, we have uh, gotten records, uh, old records, uh, that were at ASU in my collection. ASU has a huge collection that used to belong to Goodyear Farms, and it's in the Architectural Library, and it's in the Chicano Archives at ASU. And the, the information is there. Right now, the city of Avondale owns the cemetery. I used to own it several years ago when George Bruce gave it to me. Avondale came into play, and they liked it, so they took it without permission. But uh, they seem to be doing a good job. I think in 1918, 1917, 1918, the influenza that hit, uh, they were dying so fast in the labor camps. There were about 10 labor camps out here, and like out there in Ocotillo. And uh, when, um, they started dying so fast, not only Goodyear Farms labor camps, but surrounding ranchers. It was too far to take them all the way to Phoenix to bury them. And not only that, since you had influenza cases, the travel would kind of like spread as you're traveling. So they decided to dig a hole. So they dug a hole out there, right there where the, where the fence is at, the gate is at. And it goes halfway out into the street, halfway into the cemetery, 250 people are buried there. They died of influenza. City of Avondale, city manager back in the 80s, I wrote him a letter, because he wrote me a letter saying that they were gonna start building here and there. They were gonna put a road. I said, well, you make sure when you put your road that you move it further east, because it's burial there. They never paid attention, they forgot, build a road on top of them. So this is the section right here. When you come in the cemetery right here, right in this corner here where all these big rocks are at, and out into the street, or where they built that huge mass grave that he was talking of, of the 250 plus people who died in the epidemic in the early 1920s. And now 
there's a road that's going over half of what used to be that burial. Where these houses are at, to the west, cemetery used to be 10 acres. Now it's four acres. Those houses are on top of graves. And I, I can do those people don't even know is that they gotta know somebody's buried in the backyard. Yeah, but some of them have swimming pools. That means that this pool company never told them they dug somebody up. He says that this cemetery is now four acres, but it used to be 10 acres. That's right, it used to be 10 acres. So where is the rest of the cemetery? Well, according to him, who's the historian here, it's right back there where those houses are at. Those houses were built about 15 years ago and those houses were built over grave sites. And like he was saying, some of those houses have pools in the back of them. So whoever was digging up those pools at the time had to have come across remains. That's just what I've been told. But other than that, I'm out here like maybe every two weeks, survey, map, remap, record names, um, looking for the veterans, World War II, Vietnam, and there are out here, I have 17 of them. And every year for Veterans Day, they don't even lower the flag. They don't even place flags on the graves. I have to come out of here. I can't lower the flag because it's locked, but I place flags on the veterans' graves. But hey, these are our families, not your family. They're our families. And culturally, this is what we believe in doing, respect, period. Okay, so I just went into the Wigwam Resort. I parked where it says public parking and I went over to uh, the area to check it out. It's very nice. People like Clint Eastwood have stayed here. A lot of Hollywood people have stayed here. Um, I'm just dressed in my normal shorts, hat, sweaty from filming, but the people here couldn't have been nicer to me. Uh, they came out, they talked to me, they told me exactly where I need to go. So uh, there's a historical spot right on this resort because the Wigwam Resort was originally meant to be a place where like the Goodyear executives and people who would come down to Goodyear to check out what was going on with this cotton growth and all the farms they had, they had to have a place to stay. So they built this resort area, which were, which actually turned into this huge resort area. It was open to the public, I believe, in 1929. So let's go check it out. Okay, well, I feel like I'm at the Masters here, and I'm inviting, you know, hello, friends. But I'm inside the Wigwam Resort in the front, and what I've been told by the people who work here is that this fireplace, this stone fireplace here, is an original structure from back in the 1920s. Very nice, the fire is actually going very warm considering it's 90 degrees outside right now here in September. But uh, really nice structure. I'm gonna go ahead and walk around. They have some awesome uh, pictures here. I'm gonna check things out. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arizona Timeless Tours. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would ask that you would hit that subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing. And if you want to hire me to speak about the great state of Arizona, I'm going to leave my email down in the bottom. It's deanb7010 at gmail.com. Until next time, take care.